I use money as a lens in my work with NLP. Money magnifies how we engage with life. As you mentioned, NLP is neurolinguistics programming. It's really the language of the brain. So it's how the brain structures and puts sequences together and the meaning then that we make of it. And I use money as a lens in my work with NLP because it's about how we engage with life. Mm-hmm. For example, people have um, a range of issues around money where they don't have enough or they um, have a sense of scarcity or they're working really hard to try to get more money. So one of the examples I use is at the end of the month, do you dread looking at your credit card mm-hmm. and your credit card statement because you've just allowed yourself during that month to buy and engage with things. And then you get to the point where you now regret it, dread looking at it or feel shame or guilt around what you've spent and tried to allow yourself to have. So if you feel guilty or shameful about the things that you've reached for, or that you're trying to have or give yourself in life, what does that say about your relationship to life and the relationship with yourself? Mm -hmm. So money magnifies how we engage with life. So then it starts to point back to our limiting beliefs about ourselves um, and things that, that we distort and generalize about that create either unwanted experiences that we keep having over and over again, no matter what we do, that we're trying to stop having, or there's an experience we really want to have that we're not able to create or have. So that's kind of the first place that I look because our conscious brain um, is making these choices, but it's our subconscious and even critter reptilian brain that is possibly reinforcing a limiting pattern. Uh, or belief that prevent us from having what we want. And people get so charged up um, around money, but really that's a symptom of something that's going on inside. Absolutely. And And I mean, one of the things that I know that you wanted to touch on was that a lot of people that listen to these podcasts and things like that, they've done some work on their self. uh, They've dived in, but then, you know, a lot of times people have spent years, months, sometimes even decades doing a lot of work on their self and they still don't have what they want yet. And so can we, you, you touch a little bit on that and what that's all about? Absolutely. Cause it's a common complaint I get like, why don't I have it yet? After yeah. years of, you know, like you said, journaling affirmations, self-work. Part of the problem is, is that when we do um, some of the work that is mainstream for us to do on these limiting beliefs, it's all in our conscious brain. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. So we have something called the executive fun- functioning brain, which is the cerebral cortex. We have different parts of our brain. They're basically separate brains all held in one. Okay. And then back here at the base of your skull, the top of your spinal cord is the reptilian brain, which I refer to as the critter brain. These are two different brains that have two different functions and two different purposes. The critter brain is all about survival and the executive function brain is all about choice and quality of life. So when you decide that you wanna have more money in your life, you wanna have more creativity, more freedom, a love um, relationship, that's coming from up here, from your executive functioning brain. But the critter brain may be running a pattern from your childhood that feels like you're not worthy, you're not deserving, um, those kind of things. And those two are at odds with each other. When we do meditations, affirmations, even therapy and some other change style work, we're only working in our executive functioning brain. And that does not communicate as directly as we would like it to, to our critter brain. Mm-hmm. The critter brain is just all about survival. So you can do all the affirmations and journaling and books that you read and, and seminars. And if they don't deal with where that limiting pattern was laid down, that belief, then it'll take a long time to get there. It's kind of like walking from California to New York. You will get there. It's just a long time. It just Mm -hmm. takes longer. And some people get stuck in Ohio. And Ohio is not a bad place to get stuck. But sometimes people just get stuck in Ohio. And they're like, I haven't been able to get any farther. I want to get to my destination. Let me go. Um, Yeah. So it's just important to analogy that like, you know, sometimes you might you, uh, notice incremental changes and you think that you're on that way and then you get stuck again. Right. You know, because there's steps towards everything. Yeah. And insights happen at the conscious brain. The subconscious critter brain doesn't care about those insights. It's not checking the flavor of quality. It's just saying, am I still alive? So we can read a book and have great insights about what happened to us, why we decided that or what 
you know, what the pattern came from, but it doesn't actually change the pattern. And a lot of times that conscious brain in the work that we do uh, in general in the public is they want you to catch yourself in the moment. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you're feeling um, anxious, you're feeling scared or procrastinating or a sense of lack or unworthy, catch yourself and meditate or um, do affirmations on it. All wonderful, lovely practices, but you're still dealing with the conscious brain. Um, and you mainly do those practices for half hour, an hour during the day when that critter brain loop of not feeling deserving, not feeling worthy will be running 24 seven without stop. So you're only interrupting it for a period of time versus so, going to the source. So how do you use an NLP to interrupt that critter brain? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, it's again, it's about the language of the brain. So the conscious brain, obviously we can use language. The critter brain uh, doesn't use language because language doesn't come on until later in life or later in development. So we use pictures, sounds, and feelings. And we go back and we give through NLP, through techniques of anchoring and some spatial exercising, we give it more options than the survival pattern. For example, if you were a child that grew up um, getting hit on your on the head by a hammer, whether it was figuratively or literally, your critter brain goes, oh my God, he's got hit by a hammer. Okay, survived. Mm-hmm. And they get hit, oh, get hit by a hammer. Okay, survived. And you have that happen enough that the critter brain goes, oh, I can survive being hit by a hammer. You get old enough, you leave that situation. You're like, I'm free from the conscious brain. I'm free. The critter brain is starting to wonder, I haven't been hit on the head in a while. Am I still alive? So it goes out there and searches for people to outsource hammer hitting. So instead of it being a parent, let's say, it'll become a spouse, a coworker, a boss, a landlord. It'll become somebody else. And then you get hit on the head and you go, oh. The critter brain goes, oh, I can relax. I'm still alive. So that's how we can repeat the same oscillating patterns with money, with love, um, any kind of situation. It's because that brain is trying to repeat it versus your conscious brain is saying, I want something better. Why am I still Mm -hmm. back here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're basically saying that there's techniques Mm -hmm. and strategies and these Mm -hmm. techniques and strategies, whether that be uh, anchoring or pattern or switch, pa- switch pattern or any of these other NLP techniques, but you utilize these techniques. And in a moment, in an instance, people c- are given multiple choices and their brain can start to operate from a different paradigm. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Cause the, the critter brain will keep choosing the hammer unless you give it something else. And then mm-hmm. you give it something else. It always pick the best option, but absolutely. Cause it's actually the techniques don't take very long. What takes a little while is finding what the um, that original belief was. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day.